I've been following Loli Sports since maybe season three. Actually, me and my dad came down in season three to watch World Finals here in LA, and it just came full circle. Now I'm here as a pro player. If you told me when I was nine years old, when I was watching World Finals, that I'd be a pro player, I would not have believed you. But at the same time, as I got older and older, and I kept getting higher ranked, and I did good in amateur, I could see it coming. Here comes Busio. I was never really playing just for fun. The most valuable prospect looking to make a difference here. Ignite takes him down. I always got a lot more dopamine from ranking up and getting better than simply just playing the game. Are you kidding? But I don't really feel like I've succeeded yet. It's only really success once I do good in LCS. It is in itself an accomplishment, but I wouldn't be satisfied with that. And I actually want to be a good player that is a staple of the LCS. It's two weeks to the season starting. Right now I'm out here hiking to get myself in the right mindset for scrims today. I'm here at the Culver City Stairs, and this is a hike that I used to do almost every day in Academy. It's something that helped me a lot to focus before scrims, and now that I'm an LCS starter, it's only more important to keep that same energy. Got an eye on the highest mountain, mentioned with a golden fountain. When I first found out I'm getting promoted to LCS, of course I was extremely excited and extremely grateful that I got promoted so quickly. And when I found out my lane partner was Dublift, I thought that was just amazing to play with one of the GOATs, the most experienced player. I was really shocked when my GM messaged me that Dublift really wants to play with me because I know he definitely had offers from other teams, but he chose 100 Thieves for less money because he was really interested in me. Thinking about how he has eight trophies is definitely overwhelming. No player except for Bjergsen is even close to that. And it's just insane that he's accomplished so much. He's generally an ADC that's much more pressuring to play with in and out of game, but him believing in me really helps me. I played studio stage games in Academy, but it obviously wasn't the same as LCS, and now that it's coming soon, I feel the pressure, but it's also way more exciting. Stop asking who. Yeah, I got fined for wearing the Crocs at Worlds, but I still wore them because, like, I don't know, it's crazy for fining me for wearing Crocs. It's light, it feels good to wear, so I, I like the Crocs, like, I mess with the buds, but I need new shoes. These are nice. Can I try these on? This is a new chapter for me going into my second year. Um, I feel like in my rookie year, a lot of my roles were just helping the team win and them carrying and just helping them. But I think this year I'll be doing a lot of the carrying and I think I really stepped it up, especially in the off season of how I practice, so yeah. The expectations for EG are really high. At least for me, I think we're, we should win the whole thing and go to MSI, so yeah, I'll be pretty bummed out if we don't. When I first started off my career in spring, I mean, spring honestly wasn't too hot, at least in the regular season. Um, I wasn't playing well, I was pretty bad, but during playoffs, I improved and the team improved a lot, so we won the whole thing, and that felt really good, especially in my first split. Yeah, it would look great on stage. You know, we had a lot of momentum going into summer to win it all, but we came up short 3 2, so it definitely sucked not winning the whole thing in summer two. I think that kind of woke me and my teammates up a lot. Kind of gave us like a realistic expectation because we all thought we would win it pretty easily. So um, that definitely gave us motivation to play well at Worlds, which 
I mean, I would say we played well at Worlds, kind of. We still beat EU, so yeah, I mean, it's not the worst thing. Got one more pair of shoes. These are probably my favorite out of all three. There was definitely times when I talked trash and I lost. I mean, I guess you could say that backfired, um, but I don't know. I mean, I'll, it's more fun just talking, so that's what I do. I, mean, I definitely have haters. I feel like everyone has haters, so I mean, there's nothing you can do about that. If I get more haters or I'm vilified, it still helps me too. And you know, more people are talking about me then, and even if they're hating, they're still talking about me. So, I mean, it helps me at the end. It kind of fuels me in a way where if I win and they were talking shit, then, you know, I can just laugh back at them kind of. So, I mean, obviously it feels good. So yeah, it definitely does give me some fuel. Ooh, these look good. They feel nice. I like them. These are my favorite by far. I feel like where I'm going right now with my arc, I mean, I feel like it's been good and then it went down a bit and I feel like it's really gonna rise up again this split. We switched our top laner and ADC for FBI and someday sort of the 100 Thieves team. We already played some scrims, so I think we're a really good team so far. I think the roster looks really good, so I definitely think we're, we're contenders for winning the whole thing. Can I get a medium in these? Me playing really well as a rookie, Obviously feels good, but you know, if I don't play well, then it doesn't matter at the end of the day. So I feel like longevity really matters a lot and I'm just trying to stay focused. And as long as I work hard, I think I'll be at the top for a very long time as long as I'm playing. All right, thank you. Cloud9, the most dominant team in the LCS have won their fourth title. Yeah, two more here. Yeah. Wow. They're just changing the lot. Okay. Looks like world kind of. Yeah. Are you ready? Ready to beating grandfathers? <laughs> of course. <laughs> I don't know what I want to play. 올라가는 것보다는 그 자리를 유지하는 게더 어렵다고 생각을 해서 일단은 이번에도 그 자리를 지킨다면은 그거는 진짜 저한테 엄청난 뭐랄까 약간 자부심을 느끼게 해줄 것 같고요. 이첫 번째 우승은 약간 운이 운일 수도 있지만 두 번째부터는 실력이라고들 하잖아요. 약간 저는 그거를 제 스스로 증명하고 싶네요. <목소리> 지벤이 원딜 출신이어서 특히 베테랑 원딜 출신이잖아요. 그래서 지벤이 저한테 좀 도움을 많이 주고 약간 이제 지벤이 서포트로는 작년이 처음이었는데 사실 그렇게 도움을 많이 줄 친구 친구가 없었어요. It wasn't something that I wanted to do. It wasn't like a normal thing for me. It wasn't a natural transition for me. But I thought why not just do, do it one split? You know, better, better play, not play, right? And then we won the LCS in, in my first split of support, something he, would never, he could never do. <laughs> and um, then in 2023, for the season, I thought this might just be my best option still. And with Mithy in the team, I thought he could help me. And yeah, I think Berserker is probably the only ADC in the LCS that I would play support for. I also said to C9 immediately that if it's not Berserker playing ADC, I'm not playing support. And he said the same thing to C9 about me, so there's mutual respect. In some ways, I did mentor Jesper, but I was also like, I mean, it's not like I'm old now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I was also pretty young, and I'm pretty sure it was a two-way street where Jesper also helped me like grow to the person I am today. It was just mostly like getting him comfortable with, you know, the high-stakes games, being in the right mindset, and the most important thing for me and Jesper was a sense of humor and being able to give feedback, receive feedback without really like getting too upset. Like emotional happens all the time, but getting like too upset where like you can't move on from something. And I think Berserker has just that from the little interactions that we've all had together. Popsicle may just melt here in a moment. Stace is about to wear off. Berserker! The damage comes Berserker! through the shutdown. Berserker! The Zomers are absolutely 
really shredding them. I never doubt the. Okay, so uh, player of the game. Who is your who's yeah. your player of the game vote in that one? I'm second, my boy, of course. Yeah, not biased for sure. No, uh, okay. Not, not who's, yeah, who's okay, here? I'll say Busio did a comeback there. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. I'll say it was a rough start, but he persevered. In Chicago for the finals, as a hundred thieves, uh, we definitely had a lot to think about going up against C9. Playing against him was a pain in the ass, so <laughs> I'm just glad I'm, I'm in Cloud9 this time around. <laughs> I had my doubts about Berserker at first. I thought he had mechanics, he had laning phase, but he didn't have the killer instinct in terms of like the, the moment to step up and really carry the whole team on his back. I felt like he would at times just let the team loose rather than like try something crazy. And then I realized in summer split that that changed when we worked together for like a month and a half or two months before the, the playoffs. He started actually just, you know, carrying the games, taking the team on his back, 1v5. Berserkers on the Nexus Towers. He's low, he's not quite dead. And then how far remains a triple kill for a man true to his name. And that's when I realized that he could be, you know, world class. Cloud9, find a rookie AD carry out of Korea, and he will do everything. He only showed a fraction of what he's capable of, and I think in, in 2023, he will show that last year wasn't just a fluke. The expectation is high, being a rookie on such a strong roster, but my job is just play my game, improve, get comfortable, and try to win a championship. Stop asking I definitely think I just got better in every single way, honestly, so I think this year, I mean, I'm gonna get MVP, I'm gonna guess, so yeah.